We are on episode 26. It's kind of hard to believe that we're that far along here in this journeyman coach mode dynasty. But this week, uh, New Mexico takes on Wyoming in what is a pretty pivotal Mountain West Conference matchup. But before we start talking about that, let's jump into the top stories. Big ACC win. Clemson is celebrating after a sweet victory over ACC rival NC State as Clemson wins over the Wolfpack 42-35. They dug themselves a hole after a pretty bad sec- uh, third quarter. But a couple touchdowns late in the game gives the Tigers the win uh, as they win on a 53-yard touchdown pass. That would be pretty exciting uh, way to win there for Clemson. But uh, Tigers with a huge ACC win. Flawless Texas A&M stays unbeaten with a 38-35 win versus conference rival USA. Or sorry, LSU. A&M wins 38-35. Guys, A&M... We played A&M to it. I mean, obviously they beat us pretty good, but it's 21 to three, and then we were we were respectable. And now it looks like the Aggies are fighting for a uh, college football playoff appearance. They're number four in the country. So uh, interesting. All right, so conference collision. 20 number 22 Oregon set to do battle with number 19 Stanford in a Pac-12 showdown. Big Ten foes clash. This week's big games notches. Top 10 Big Ten powers Maryland and Ohio State. Where's the love? The number 11 Eagles hope to garner national considerations. Boston College, they've won seven. They won all seven of their games. Now, you look at their schedule, though. They've not played a single ranked opponent. They have wins over Ball State, Arkansas State, and then an FCS team. Then they go into conference play. They beat Duke pretty good, which, hey, Duke 6-2. and two, So, you know, a little respect there. Uh, they get a win against Virginia, Louisville, Wake Forest. They have no wins against ranked opponents. I don't think any of these teams were ever ranked this season. So I can understand why people are a little skeptical. They got Virginia Tech this week. We'll see how they do there. And then three games in a row against the top three teams in the conference. That'll really tell the tale of if this team is for real or if they're just another pretender and that'll end the season with three or four losses. We'll see. Um, still, interesting story there. Jam-packed. In the end, the magic of Gaylord family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium prevails. Wow, that's a long name for a stadium. But uh, apparently the Sooners got to win. 34-27 over Western Kentucky. So Oklahoma struggling a little bit in their first SEC season. Um, but they are 6-3 and three overall. So uh, good win there for Oklahoma as they gain bowl eligibility. USC survives the scare. USC lifts its Pac-12 record to 4-2 and with a close win over Arizona State as the Trojans win 26-21. Wow, Arizona State made a spirited comeback attempt. Uh, but it fell short as the Trojans get the win. Uh, Tapscott takes charge. Appalachian State outlasts Old Dominion in the Battle of Sunbelt Offenses. Who cares? Uh, top 25. Uh... College football playoff, you see the top 10 there. Ohio State, Texas, Auburn, Texas A&M. You got three SEC teams now in the top four. That's not going to last. Uh, Texas and A&M will play each other. Auburn uh, will end up playing Alabama, who, by the way, is sixth. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of football left to be played. We'll, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, looking there, you got Michigan, Alabama, Georgia, all working right outside the top four. Notre Dame, Florida State, Maryland can't rule any of those teams out. So that's your top 10 in the college football playoff. Uh, overall, Ohio State, Texas, Auburn, A&M, Michigan, Alabama, Georgia, Florida State, Notre Dame, Maryland. Pretty much the same top 10. Number 11, Boston College. 12, Clemson. 13, Ohio, Iowa State. Uh, 14, Kansas State. 15, North Carolina after a huge win over Virginia Tech. Houston uh, over TTU. They are now number 16. Oklahoma beats Western Kentucky, so they're 17. Arizona State, that loss to USC, drops them down from 11 to 18. Stanford. Uh, beat Oregon State, so they move up to 19. Utah is 7-1 after a win over UCLA. They're now number 20. Baylor, 21. They lost to Kansas State, so they fell a few spots. Uh, number 22 is Oregon after beating Arizona. NC State's loss to Clemson drops them to 23. Arkansas, uh, they were uh, off this week, but they jumped back into the top 25. They're now number 24. Cal beats Washington, so they're now number 25. Others receiving votes, BYU, Washington, USC, Coastal Carolina, Ole Miss, Washington, and Vanderbilt both dropped out. So that is your top 25. What about the Heisman race? Let's take a look at the Heisman watch. Uh, Number one is Bijan Robertson. He has retaken his place atop the watch list. McClellan from Alabama is still second. Blake Horn drops the third. 
Uh, yeah, he was not super productive. Only 83 yards. He did have a touchdown. Um, but you look at that score. I mean, they destroyed Minnesota. They scored 66 points. Of course, Corum is going to be taken off the field. Uh, meanwhile, Evan Pryor, the running back from Ohio State, is fourth. Trey Adam is fifth, the uh, power back from Arizona State. They lost to USC, but he had 99 yards. Uh, not enough to, to advance him on the list, but he is still there. So that is a look at your Heisman watch. What about the conference standings of the Mountain West? Well, the win over... Uh, who did we beat last week? Oh, my word. This is embarrassing. Um, we dominated. No, no, we didn't dominate. It was Hawaii. They're in the West. Yeah, Hawaii's in the Western Division. So that win is big because now we are clear by two games against every other team in the division. However, this week we play Wyoming. Wyoming is 3-2. and two. They're the closest team to us in the divisional race. Uh, so we have to play them. We still have to play Boise. We still have to play Air Force. We still have to play Colorado State. So if we lose two of those games, one of them being to Wyoming or to Boise, then we might not win the division. So these next couple of games are huge. Uh, let's look at our schedule. We play Wyoming. We go to Wyoming. And then we go to Auburn. Then we go to Air Force before coming home to Boise. So these next four games are big. Now the Auburn game, it's big from kind of a per, uh, perception standpoint, right? Where's our program? Yeah, we're 6-1 and one right now. But you could make the argument the only real team we've played is Texas A&M. If uh, if we lose, to, if we get blown out by Auburn, then you know we're really kind of just seen as this. Well, that's that Mountain West team. Uh, so you know, like that game is not huge. It's really, it's really just a perception game. If we really want to advance our program in the conference, we got to come away with the division title, which means playing well against Wyoming, getting the win, locking that division up, and then you know we have to after if we beat Wyoming. We really only have to win one more of these last three games. So um, so it's a big games, you know, really to kind of make sure that we finish strong. And, uh, you know, it, it, it would be a shame to play this well in all these games, right? Crush San Diego State, run away from Nevada, hammer Utah State, play against a very tough Hawaii team and come away with a win to play well in all those games but then to end the season without anything to show for it so uh to get that done we're gonna have to play well in those last four games so that's where we are in the conference standings let's jump into recruiting there is a little bit of recruiting news not much but let's talk about it not a lot of recruiting news here on the opening screen anyway as we see that we're in recruiting battle we've already known that with several of these players uh, we did get some news on Dan Ridgeway, quarterback that we added late. He's ready to visit, so we're going to bring him in and see where we can get with him. Uh, let's actually take a little deeper dive into recruiting to see where we're at. So things are getting a little more intense with our quarterback recruiting. We, we want to bring in at least one. What I'm doing here is I'm, I've got three guys on my list, so let's look at kind of where we are. Dan Ridgeway, big game there. I still haven't got him in scheduled yet for a visit. I think I'm going to need that if I have any chance of getting the guy. Richmond Smith, on the other hand, he came in this week. Big visit. A lot of points. We took the lead. Now, he visits Houston this week. There's not much chance that Houston is going to jump to the lead. They might be able to cut that deficit in half at best. So I feel good about where I am with Richmond Smith, at least until he visits TCU. As you can see, TCU... They're right there. And so when he goes to visit them, they're going to take the lead. You know, unless I can, I don't know. I just, that's just going to happen. Frank Gillum, uh, for some reason, I cannot figure out why, but Navy with a huge jump there. Why is Navy gaining 980 points when I'm throwing 550 at it? This whole thing, I don't understand this race with Frank Gillum. So honestly, at this point, I'm really just kind of crossing my fingers. I, I really want Frank Gillum. I might end up with none of these guys. And then I'm in big trouble because I'm only going to have three quarterbacks on scholarship next year. I'm going to need to go get at least two next year. But, you know, my hope is that one of these guys will come in. You know, I, I don't want it to be Ridgeway. But if that's who it's going to be, that's who it's going to be. Um, running back, Maxi. you know, I'm going to get Maxi. That's just where I am. I mean, TCU, when he goes to visit them, they'll gain. But they're not going to take the lead. None of these teams are. I'm going to be well out in front by the time we get to offseason. And I'll get him. I don't even really care because he's not that good. Rivers, probably going to get him. 
I don't understand. This is another one. I just can't figure out what's going on. I thought I understood how it worked, but Washington is picking up 358 points per week. All these other teams are. They've not even offered the guy. I'm thinking it's just because I've already signed a receiver and that sort of, for whatever reason, pisses Rivers off. But I I hope he ends up signing with me anyway. Whitlock, I'm not going to get him. I gained 80. But I just, you've got, I've got UTSA right behind me. He visits them in week 13. He'll, they'll jump to the lead. I just, it's kind of depressing in some of these areas. I do, I'm well out in front on Freeman. The other teams are gaining slowly, but it's another situation where they're not putting anything towards him. They've not even offered him. I've not even offered him, uh, which I, I'm going to end up offering him, I guess, if I don't get Whitlock. Um, we go strong safety, Trey Duncan. Yeah, that one's, I don't even know why I'm throwing points at this guy. It's over. I guess I'm hoping to survive to the offseason. And then hopefully I'm in this situation where I can just throw all my offseason points at him and get him. That's the only chance I have at him. Arthur Adkins, big gain after the visit last week, but I'm still behind Notre Dame. So I'm going to have to keep chipping away at that lead. Hopefully by the end of the season, I'm out in front. Mike Williams, big lead there. For some reason, uh, he's not. Let me go look at my visits. We'll do this while you're on screen. Ridgeway is the only guy, so I'll schedule him for the Boise game. So go back to my all positions. So you guys just got to see something that I usually do off screen. Uh, Where were we at? Williams. Oh, man, this is bad. Uh, I think we're at Williams. Yeah, I'll end up with him. Uh, Adkins was the guy I was talking about. So hopefully I can get him signed on. Still behind, but I got to keep chipping away. Williams, I'll end up with him. Benson, he's a guy that I just threw on the list. Rice has offered it. But they're not throwing anything at him. Uh, I feel like if I really want Benson, I'm not. I don't want Benson. But if it comes to like desperation mode, maybe I end up with him. I now lead for Monroe. Uh, I'm going after him. I, you know, I could probably sign him. Uh, he'd be better than Maxi. But Gordon is the guy. I think that the, my running back targets. He's the one that I really want. So hopefully, I end up with him. I've got some other guys I'm not throwing points at. We're not going to waste time on them yet because while I've got them on my on my list, they're really just I'm just going to start pursuing them if my other options fall through. Uh, Bert, a tackle. He's a guy I I need an offensive lineman. Uh, things aren't working out in my the other uh, targets, so I'm going to throw some points at him and see where it goes. I just started doing that. I, I without doing without throwing points at him, I gained 75. So hopefully. You know, in a week or two, I'll I'll be in the lead there. So Wyoming, as we look at uh, the, as our opponent this week, uh, is coached by Brian Stewart. In real life, Brian Stewart is actually the defensive coordinator for Maryland. Um, but in my dynasty, Wyoming has snatched him up. Um, offensively, he's going to run the Maryland offense, which is apparently a multiple offense. They will run it. Oops, a little more than they're passing. I'm going to have to remember to get out of there without saving. Uh, defensive style, they run that 4-2-5, which uh, last couple times we've faced it, we've actually pr- played pretty well, but it is the, one of the most challenging defenses that we play. It really kind of negates our running game, which means we've got to pass the ball well, uh, which we do mostly. But, that you know, the 4-2-5, that puts five DBs out there on every play. So it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's tough. It's a tough deal. So uh, we're going to have to play well. Uh, to be able to uh, to beat Wyoming. Uh, and, I, and also, let's see, I really messed this up. I hit a button by mistake. I've got fat fingers, and so like a moron, uh, I go in there and whatever, I'll hit stuff. But Brian Stewart is their coach. What about their personnel? Once again, we start with the injury report, and New Mexico is has a clean bill of health. Wyoming also has no injuries, so the Cowboys will be at full strength. So let's take a look at the depth chart. Their quarterback is Levi Williams, redshirt senior. He's an 83 overall. Looks to be a bit of a pocket passer, so he'll be a good passer. Uh, running back, 77-73. A couple decent backs, not a lot of speed there, but uh, you know they're going to be tough to bring down. Fullback is a 76 and a 73 overall. We can expect to see Driscoll and maybe even Christensen at various times, and that's 76 is a pretty good fullback rating. Uh, the receiving core is not scary, but deep. 
Again, not a lot of fast guys, you know, not a lot of pace, a lot of speed. But if you look, they're all very similar. There's not much of a drop-off from 1 to 5, so we can expect some trouble there. Tight end, 71 overall. Left tackle, 78, 71, 78, 69, and 67. So the weak part of their offensive line is on the right side. Defensively, they have a 73 left end, uh, 82 on the right end. So Pate, Jalen Pate, could be a challenge for us. 78, 75 up the middle. Uh, then a 71, 67 after you get past the first layer. Left outside linebacker doesn't really play much in a 4 2 5, but he's a 76 overall. Their middle linebacker is a 78. Backup is a 76. So they're pretty much the same. On the right, uh, Shea is a 77. His backup, 77. So they've got a couple solid running back or linebackers. Cornerback, 73, 72. Then you get down to Harris, who's a 70, and then you've got a big drop-off. They have middle linebacker playing as the dime back, and then their 15 cornerback is a running back. He's a 65 overall. Uh, so, you know, like cornerbacks, they, you know, we I feel like we match up well, receiver against their secondary. Their free safety is a 64. Like that, on the very back end, they're gonna be they're gonna be vulnerable. Strong safeties, they have a 77 starting. Glinton is a tough, you know, he's going to be tough. But then their their other strong safety on the other side is a middle linebacker, which, okay, you know, but really that's kind of turning a 4-2-5 into a 4-3 defense. Uh, he's not overly fast, so you're going to be matching him up against our receivers. Uh, you know, that that is encouraging to kind of see that, all right? So their kicker, though, Hoyland, is a 92. That might be the best kicker in the Mountain West Conference. So they're going to have it. If this thing comes down to a Wyoming 50-yard field goal, they're going to win the game. Uh, that's just the reality. He's a good kicker. Fawa is a 71 punter. Uh, so I mean, overall, we might have a better punter, but their kicker is very good. So special teams advantage. I got to tip the cap to Wyoming. So that's what we're looking at. Let's go to the game and see how well we fare against the Cowboys. And it's time for the big Mountain West Conference matchup here in New Mexico and Wyoming as we look at... Wyoming. Uh, we see that uh, statistically they're okay. They're not bad. They've uh, you know been respectable, I guess. Um, you know, offensively, they struggle a little bit, but uh, they do. I mean, they average winning 26-24. So you know, just whatever. Broadly speaking, uh, they've been successful. They're five and two. You know, they've won five games. They're one win away from bowl eligibility. They're three and two in the conference. So this is um yeah. They, I, I honestly. I feel like this is going to be a game similar to last week against Hawaii. As we look at uh, their top players, their kicker is their top player. So he could be a factor. Um, I don't know why, but it always worries me when I see a kicker as the other team's best player. Like, I should see that and think, you know, this is a joke. But for, I just I always imagine the game coming down to like a 50-yard field goal and then losing because of it. Uh, their quarterback is their second best player, Williams. We know he's going to be good. He's going to be tough. So we anticipate... Um, you know, that he's going to be able to help that team move the ball. Uh, their right end, Pate, is their top defensive player. For us, it's Dawson, Silla, and Dumas. Dumas has been playing pretty well. Um, obviously, he's not, you know, we're not a running team, so he's not getting 100-yard rushing games every week. But uh, when he gets the ball in his hands, he's been able to make some plays. So let's go to Wyoming and see if we can get this thing done. And it looks like a clear day. The Cowboys host New Mexico. New Mexico is unbeaten in Mountain West Conference. They're quickly kind of uh, making a name for themselves this season uh, as one of the top teams in the conference. So this is a chance for Wyoming uh, to get a to get a big feather in their cap. And if things go their way the rest of the season, maybe, maybe even find themselves in the Mountain West Championship game. New Mexico, meanwhile, they're trying to keep this momentum going. Uh, they've been a juggernaut offensively through most of their conference uh, season. Um, and we'll see if they can keep that going. We see at the number one passing offense. They are ninth in passing touchdowns. Um, Wyoming seems to lean a little towards the pass themselves. Uh, we'll, see if, uh, we'll see if that plays true here today. Our, our secondary obviously is susceptible. And they've got a good quarterback. So it could be a recipe for Wyoming to make a game of this thing uh, here at their home stadium. Uh, New Mexico wants to get out of here with a win and uh, keep uh, keep moving towards the Mountain West Conference Championship. So there's a lot at stake here today. Uh, can uh, C.J. Montez continue to pad his stats as he is quick, quickly becoming um, one of those 
uh, big names in the college football. He's put out, he's had quite a year passing the ball. We'll see if he can keep going today here at War Memorial Stadium. So Williams will go from under center this time and play action again. Pass to the left. This one's caught. That'll be a first down. Big gain here as Nick Miles rumbles down the left sideline. He picks up 26 yards, and that's going to set Wyoming up inside the red zone. Got a little wildcat action going on from Wyoming. And the receiver comes in the backfield. Quarterback keeps it. And he's going to take it to the end zone. Touchdown, Dwayne McNeely. <laughs> the Wyoming, with authority, takes a first drive down the field and scores. And they now lead the Lobos 6 to nothing. You see C.J. Montez's numbers from last week. A good game last week, but right now he's trailing 7 to nothing. 3rd and 5. Montez takes the snap. Moves to his right, throws to his left, and it's intercepted. This could be a pick 6. Hey, they bring him down inside the 20, but Wyoming will start their next drive inside the New Mexico red zone. Just a poor pass right into coverage. The Wyoming defender was waiting for the ball. And it'll be 1st and 10 for the Cowboys. 4th and 14. This will make it a 40-yarder. And kick is up this time. And he got it. 1st and 10. Quick screen to the left. This is Erickson. He will turn it upfield and he'll have a nice gain. He gets 16 yards on the screen. Crompton rolling the dice. He's going to go for it. They need the 38. Pass across the middle is caught. Big play there by Lanier. He gets 21 yards. Huge fourth down conversion. That really could have put the Lobos in an even deeper hole than they were already in. But this now will set New Mexico up in the red zone. So second and five. Line to gain is the 15. There's an adjustment made. Oh, the handoff to Dumas. Wyoming got penetration, but Dumas beat it. And he gets the ball down to the five-yard line on the 15-yard run. Blows right past the Wyoming front defenders. So from the six. New Mexico trying to get on the board. Trailing 10 to nothing. Pass across the middle is complete to Erickson for the touchdown. Erickson beats his man on the slant route. And Montez delivers a perfect pass right to the numbers. And New Mexico is on the board. And Williams to throw for the first. Let's see if he can get it. Pocket holds until he is dropped. Sacked for an eight-yard loss. Is that Silla? I need to learn number. No, Jaden Phillips comes into the game and drops Williams for a big stop. Wyoming now forced to punt. New Mexico with a chance to take the lead. First and ten. Right. Well, they're at the 48. 48. They're on 48. Montez going long on the wheel route. It's complete. That is why song. So that is our uh, mesh play from what we call the early formation. And Wysong runs a wheel route, gets in behind. Montez hits him perfectly, and now we're down in the red zone with a chance to take the lead. So third and two, line to gain is the seventh, or the twelfth. Montez in trouble, but he gets it away. Caught! That is Lanier, who gets 12 yards, gets the ball down inside the five. So at the end of one, Wyoming leads 10 to seven. Uh, they took the first drive right down the field, scored a touchdown, then they got a pick from Montez. New Mexico scores, and now they're inside the five with a chance to take the lead. So after the holding penalty, it's third and 15 from the 15. Very well, third and goal from the 15. Montez in some trouble, and he's sacked. Loses three yards. 34 yard attempt here from Dawson. Hold is down, kick is up, and he got it. So we have a tie game. So third and eight. They need the 48. Williams is in trouble and sacked. He is dropped for an eight-yard loss. It'll be fourth and very long. Jaden Phillips again. His second tackle, second TFL, second sack. And Wyoming will likely again punt. The line to gain is the 38. Montez to throw. 
Across the middle, complete. That is Black, no Boone, 15 yards. Big gain there by CJ Boone. Second and eight. Montez drops to throw. On the wheel route, complete. That is going to be a touchdown to Jace Taylor. That is the wheel concept. Nobody was out there. Wyoming must have brought some pressure, and they left a lot of space out there on the right. Jace Taylor's wheel route goes right into it. Montez gets in the ball, and New Mexico has the lead. So third and 10, nine seconds to go. Williams, Hoggett holds. He's in a little trouble now and he's dropped. Sacked. So this field goal attempt will cut New Mexico's lead to four going into the break. This will be a 52 yarder, but Wyoming's kicker has the leg and he missed it. The kick looks like it hit the post, either the post or the bar. Yeah, hits the post. Bounces. No good. So after the missed field goal, New Mexico will hold a seven-point lead going into the half, and that's big. The Lobos will get the ball coming out of half the locker room. And they've <laughs> they've it's been kind of up and down. You had the first uh Wyoming drives down right out of the field, the first drive of the game, scores the touchdown. New Mexico gets the ball, immediately throws an interception. Fortunately, the defense holds and only gives up a field goal. After that first drive, the New Mexico defense has stood strong, uh, but the New Mexico offense has kind of been uneven. Uh, they've been they've looked brilliant at times, not so great at others, uh, but they hold a 17 to 10 lead. New Mexico will get the ball back to start the second half, and they will have an opportunity to build on that lead. But they might need to. Wyoming, uh, even though they're behind. They got to feel good about their chances. You look at New Mexico, the stats. New Mexico, 196 yards passing and Wyoming, 71. That, I think, is the difference. Williams, for Wyoming, is going to have to start contributing in the throwing game. They've not really gotten much done in the past. Uh, they've had a very dynamic running attack, and that has made it difficult for the New Mexico defense. But until Wyoming can actually start making some plays happen in the passing game, they, they're going to be in trouble. Um, they're going to struggle. And so we'll see if New Mexico can come out here and close this game out and get the conference win. So a very gutsy play call here by New Mexico. Montes throws it long. Caught by Lanier. 41 yards. Fourth and nine on their own side of the field. Coach Crompton knew that they needed to make something happen, and Lanier just running the fade route. Huge catch, and that'll give New Mexico a big first down. So, second and nine. Montez to throw. Wyoming brings pressure, so Montez slings it out to Alexander in the flat, who takes that ball down inside the five to the four yard line. Oh, sorry, that was Alexander. Sorry. So Dawson will come out to try to push the lead to 10. That is big. It'll give him a two-score lead. The kick is up, and Dawson gets it. So third and 11. Williams is going to be a screen. He gets it away. Pass complete to McNeely. McNeely has the first down. He gets 14 yards, and that'll be a first down. So from the I formation, Williams makes an adjustment. He's now going to pitch it to the right, and this is not McNeely. Who is that? That's Hollingsworth. He gets 17 yards on the sweep. So Williams from the 39 of New Mexico. He'll fake the handoff and keep it, trying to go to the right. Finds a hole, gets a couple blocks. He waited on his blocks. He got him, and he gets 17 yards. So Wyoming here in the red zone is about the 22. Williams under center. He's got three receivers, two at his left, but he's going to hand it off to McNeely. McNeely gets a block. He gets to the right, and he'll have 10 yards. That'll be a first down. First and 10 from the 11. Handoff. Big hole, and that, that's going to be a touchdown. Hollingsworth takes it in from 11 yards out, and Wyoming is well back in this game now. It's 20-16 to 16 with the extra point on the way.
New Mexico needs like the eight. It's like the eight and a half. Montez will throw to the left. That's caught. And that'll be a touchdown. Jace Taylor takes it in from 15 yards out. Just running a little flat route. And that is a big score. New Mexico pushes their lead back out to 10 as we get ready to head to the fourth quarter. Taylor makes the catch, then turns it upfield and gets it into the end zone. So we go to the fourth quarter. This thing is, is definitely still a game. Wyoming has the ball. They're on the move. They trail by 10. New Mexico is really kind of hanging on for dear life here. We'll see if they can hold this lead. So fourth and six. Wyoming's going to go for this. They need the 41 of New Mexico. Williams to throw. Pocket holds. It's caught. That'll be a first down. McNeely picks up 13 yards on that reception. Big gain there. And Wyoming keeps the drive alive. So under center, twin receivers to the left, but the handoff is going to go to McNeely to the right. He gets around to the right side. He'll have the first down. He'll have a big gain. That is 19 yards down to the New Mexico 15. First and goal from the one. And McNeely takes the pitch from Williams. Actually, they counted it as a pass. So that'll be a touchdown, Wyoming. We'll cut this lead to three. Line to game for New Mexico is the 32. They're at their own 42. This is a big play. Wyoming, this could be a big stop for them. Oh, and there's a fumble. New Mexico, horrible blocking up front. They let the defender right through, and that just blows up the play. It'll be fourth and 15. Third and six from the gun, Williams. They need the 29. Williams' throw to the right is caught, but he stops short. Cobbs does not get to the line. It's fourth down. What will Wyoming do? From the 49. Montez will throw across the middle. Caught. That is a first down. That is Luke Wysong with the 14 yard reception. At the Wyoming 37. Montez in New Mexico trying to put this away. Quick screen to the right. That's Erickson. He breaks the tackle, turns it upfield. He'll have the first down to about the 24. And here goes Montez. He's in trouble and he's sacked. That could be good because I'm going to be able to run off a lot of clock right here. So Dawson comes out to attempt this 40-yard field goal. The best news here is that that sack means they're going to be able to eat a lot of clock as Dawson will try to push the lead to six. Kick is up. And he got it. So four seconds to go. Williams. Quite clearly in that Hail Mary set. He is going to throw. Heaves it up in the air. And it is bat around incomplete. That'll do it. So Wyoming makes this an interesting game. We go down to the wire, but New Mexico is able to get out of here with a six-point win. C.J. Montez, not his best game by far. But he ends up with 350 yards and plays well enough to get the win. That's all that really matters with this team is New Mexico will move to 7-1, 6-0 in the Mountain West with a 30-24 win. Some big plays. Uh, Chase Black made some huge plays. Got to think of Jace Taylor. Two touchdown catches. His other catch was a big first down conversion. And this was a big win. Wyoming had opportunities that, frankly, New Mexico gave them on a silver platter under glass. But New Mexico able to grind this one out and get the win. This one is huge. This is a big win. When you look at the stats, uh, yeah, New Mexico, not their best offensive performance, especially running the ball, only 64 yards on 30 carries. They had two and a half yards a carry-ish. Uh, passing the ball was okay, but you know they made it, the running game was so bad it made it hard for them. Uh, you know, set it back a lot today. 
Third down conversions are only 6 of 14, although they did convert two fourth downs. Um, but so did Wyoming. Uh, turnovers, they had the one interception that was costly, and Wyoming was able to get points out of it. Only a field goal, but it's put them behind 10 to nothing. Uh, yeah, it's just really an uneven performance. Wyoming, they were feisty. They just they were they just kept pestering, making plays here and there, made it really difficult for New Mexico to put the game away. So we look at Montez's numbers. I mean, normally these are good: 82 percent, three touchdowns, one pick. But uh, he, you know, he got how many times did he get sacked? What did that say? Five sacks. That's that's yeah. He's got to get rid of the ball. Stop trying to run for it. He got 11 yards uh, on the ground to go with his, you know, his four carries. I guess they, you know, he did gain yards. He had a 17 yard run. But uh, Dumas didn't really give us much. Alexander certainly didn't give us much. Uh, McKenney had one carry for four yards. Receiving, uh, Lanier, seven catches, 102 yards. Big day for him. No touchdowns, but he still was productive. Wysong, six catches for 82. Erickson, five catches for 47 and a touchdown. Really, you, you got to look at uh, um, uh, Taylor as the hero today, Jace Taylor. He only made three catches, but two of them were touchdowns, and one of them was a big conversion for a first down. C.J. Boone, we got to have more out of him. He's our top receiver. Three catches for 31 yards is not good enough. I don't know if it's his fault or if it's Montez's, but he was not productive enough. We've got to have more from him. Um, blocking actually had a couple pancakes from our offensive line, so that was good. Defensively, Lutelli, obviously a big day. Ten tackles. He had a TFL. Phillips led the team with two TFLs and two sacks. Uh, Crawford and Santana also each had a sack. Obviously, we had no picks. Uh, some deflections. Potts, Madison, Notams each had deflections. Madison should have had an interception. Um, kicking, Dawson made all three of his field goals, and who knows how big that was going to be. Uh, as we win by six, he misses those three field goals, and we lose this game. So... Uh, that his contribution was important. Punting the ball, Rodriguez did it right. So we get the win. Uh, I can't. I'm not gonna lie. This is a really frustrating win. A lot of stupid penalties. I'm gonna go back and sorry. I'm gonna go back and look at the penalties again. I didn't really pay attention the first time through. I just really irritated right now. Yeah, eight penalties for 95 yards. So frustrating. Uh, it killed a couple drives. Wiped a touchdown. I know at least one touchdown off the board. So overall, disappointing performance, but. Breathe a sigh of relief. The Lobos get the win, and they'll live to fight another day. So tune in next episode to see if they can somehow keep this momentum going. This is Vol Force 1 signing off. I'll see you next time.